Now with this super easy technique, I'm gonna show you how to change the color of objects, clothing, or whatever else super easily, even if you're a complete beginner. The first thing you're gonna do is create a new hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm gonna access mine in the adjustments panel. However, you can also access it down here by clicking on your effects and going up to hue saturation. In the dialog box that appears, we're gonna click on this little hand icon. And by clicking on that, we can go and sample a color in our photo that we want to change. So in this case, I wanna change the color of her dress. So I'm gonna click right here on the red dress. Notice now how this has automatically changed to our reds color range, and therefore all of these sliders are only going to affect our reds. Now at this point, it's hard to see exactly what is being affected, so let's boost our saturation up to 100, and now you can see everything that has become colored is going to be affected by our current color range. Now the problem is that obviously our skin is selected, the background is selected, and we just want to edit the dress. But if you're working with another project where there's two very different colors like blue and yellow, when you go and sample, say that blue color, this wouldn't be a problem because Photoshop will not mistake the other color. However, when there's a lot of similar hues like these red and orange tones, that's where things start to get a bit messy. And that's why I picked this image because usually changing colors isn't as easy as they make it out to be in other YouTube tutorials. Luckily, all of these colors are really easy to fix using our color range. So down at the bottom here, we have our color range slider. And wherever this slider sits within our color range, it's going to change which colors are selected. So currently, you can see that my background is orange. So that means I want to shift away from the orange colors here. It's going to click in the middle and just move that over a bit like so. And suddenly, my background becomes deselected. Now we just have her skin and the dress selected, so we have to remove that skin. Unfortunately, the skin and the dress are pretty much the exact same color, but we can try to do a little bit of fine tuning. Within our color range here, we have the feathered edge and then the hard stop for our color range. So that means I can adjust these individually to refine how my color range appears and is edited. So I'm going to just shift this in a little bit and try to remove the color of her skin a little more. So now you can see it's looking a bit better, but unfortunately it's still not quite looking right. Now again, if you had more contrasting colors that were very different, you can do all of the fine tuning right here with this slider. However, since I do have a lot of similar hues in this image, we have to go call in the big guns, which is using a selection tool, or in this case, the quick selection tool. Grabbing my quick selection tool and then enabling the sample all layers option up here, what we're gonna do is create a selection around the object we want to change the color of. Since we've tried to sample the color, change the color range, and none of it is working, we still have our skin selected here. That means that we have to use the selection. So with the help of the quick selection tool, you can select your object super easily, even if you're not familiar with these tools. What I'm going to do is click and drag over the dress. And as you can see, it creates these marching ants, which represents our selection. So the goal here is to create a selection around the entire dress. There are going to be a few areas that aren't quite right. So if you hold alt or option, you can now subtract from your selection painting on the outer edge of that selection. It's going to move it inwards and then find the next closest edge. So that's looking a lot better there. I'm going to do the same thing around her arm and then I'm going to do the same thing around her dress like so. If there's anywhere that you need to add to your selection, such as up in her shoulder here, just continue to paint without pressing any key on your keyboard and that will get the job done for you there. Now after a little bit of fine tuning, I'm happy with the selection around my dress and now we need to invert our selection. So we're only removing the unwanted colors on the outside of our dress. By pressing Command or Control, Shift and I, your selection will flip basically. So rather than selecting your object, you're gonna select everything else. And then with your layer mask selected, setting your foreground color to black, you're gonna hold Alt or Option and Delete. That's gonna fill your selection with black and leave only your object visible that you wanna change the color of. So now pressing Command or Control D to deselect that we can now have some fun with changing our colors. Double clicking on saturation to reset it to zero. Going to our hue slider, I can just move this wherever I want. And notice how the color of the dress changes without affecting her skin or the background, all with the help of our selection here. Now, once again, if you had more contrasting colors, this would have been done just with the help of your color range sliders down here. But because it wasn't really working for me, I had to create a selection in this case. Now, to get more interesting effects with your color hues, you can use the hue, saturation, and lightness sliders all together to create some more unique looks. So let's say I want to change her dress more to like a purpley color, but I want it to be a bit desaturated, and I also 
want it to be darker. So let's bring this lightness down as well. Now it kind of creates this cool dark purple color that is a lot different from the original. Now, if you're looking to change the color of your object to say black or white rather than a color, you can do so super easily with the lightness slider. Just moving this over like so, it's gonna darken down that color. However, you can see it's not really making the dress black and that's because of our color range. So just clicking on this slider and extending our color range over, I'll extend this side as well. Now you can see it starts to create a nice crisp black color just by extending that color range over. So if you're having an issue with the lightness slider, just make sure to double check your color range. Now, if I go the opposite direction on my lightness slider, that will create a white slash gray look. But with these three sliders, you can create some pretty unique colors such as sort of darker saturated colors or desaturated bright colors, whatever you're into, it's all possible with the hue, saturation, and lightness sliders. Now, if you're wanting to brush up your skills on the selection tools in Photoshop so you can make more accurate color changing adjustments, make sure to check out the video up in the corner right now where I share four of the best tools for creating selections in Photoshop. Anyways, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, of course, hit that like button down below. I really appreciate you very much for stopping by. Again, my name is Brennan from bewellcreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then. Thank you.